Hello everybody, welcome back to Deep Caffeinated Photography. I am Josh. I am Alex. And today you clicked on this video because you want to know how to shoot 35mm film. So you may be a beginner coming from digital, or you may just be a digital shooter coming from digital to film. But it doesn't really matter. All that matters is that you're shooting film now, which is amazing. Good stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to teach you the basics in no cuts, one take. Go Alex. So guys, when it comes to shooting 35mm film, you generally speaking have two options for cameras. Now the first set is SLRs. SLRs are a great tool for learning, and in my opinion, they are great for all other things as well. You have the shutter speed, you have the aperture, and also the added benefit of interchangeable lenses. On the other side of the coin, we have the point and shoots. Now the point and shoots are a real no-think kind of shooter. And in my opinion, I would like to take this to say a social event where you don't want to be fiddling with the focus and the aperture. Now, once you have made your decision on what kind of camera you want to be using, you need to think about the film. So, there are a few options. First, we have black and white film. Or color. So, usually rolls come in 24 exposures or 36 exposures. But that doesn't really matter. What you really matters is what ISO slash ASA you choose. For daylight, you shoot 100 to 400 usually. And for sunsets, you want to go at least 400. For nighttime stuff, obviously you want to choose as high as possible 800. The downsides of that is that you get more grain. Um, the, probably the most versatile one is 400 ASA. That's probably the one that you can use for pretty much anything like social gatherings or anything of the sort. But when you have your own lights, you can really just choose any film you want. It's actually pretty cool. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Just do it. Now when it comes to choosing your first roll of film, I think you guys need to be really considerate about not spending too much money. Now of course you could go for your expensive more than $20 portrait or you could go for a consumer grade film. Now for a first roll, for a first roll for a film shooter, you don't want to be spending those big bucks because you might not know how to use the format properly just yet. Now once you've picked your first roll of film, what you need to consider is actually getting it into the camera. Now for me, I still struggle with this and it, you know, it takes a lot of practice and you know, some people who have been doing it for ages still don't know how to do it. Yeah, I'm still struggling man, I'm having a lot of trouble here. You know what I mean? So what I do know is that you put the film roll, you get a film roll and you put it into this side of the camera. Sometimes it may be a little different, it may be upside down, some of them are reversed, it's a little weird sometimes. But in principle it's pretty much the same, I mean, you, then you chuck this short end here and you chuck that in one of the slots on this side over here. And it just catches up on the spool, does it? Yeah, yeah it just catches yeah. up on the spool there. And you flick that a flick. All right, nice. Eventually, you'll get it in. Uh, a bit of a rush right now, so we'll just put that down for later. But I got one prepared earlier. So once you have an exposed roll, you've shot all your shots, you're really happy with it. You bring it over to your friendly neighborhood photo lab. Hello, here is my roll of film. They do some magic and they give you something looking similar to this. So, what this is, is an ex a developed roll. If I can find it. Oh. That's cool. Nice. Wow. So, you get something like this back. Usually when you're, you know, um, giving the roll of film over to the photo lab, they ask you, do you want scans or prints? Prints, you know, they're good for photo albums, you know, they're good for, they're old school. Scans is what you want and is what I generally use nowadays. I mean, you can get JPEGs or you can get really high-res images where you can do post-production to it, which is what, you can't really do that with scans. I mean, no, sorry, prints. <laughs> but that's pretty much it. That's pretty much everything with uh, 35 millimeter. So we thank you for watching this video. Give us a like, a subscribe, and on to 120. Good stuff. Bye-bye. Uh,